Paul continues specifically now regarding the relationship between a woman and her adult male. So a woman must learn in quietness in all subjection. And that word in quietness is as we saw in verse 2 above. She must become informed intellectually as a student. That's what the word learn. Women are to learn in the state of being quiet or being undisturbed from inside, inside, tranquil from within, and therefore not causing agitation around us, not causing a disturbance. When we are to be learning in quietness, we should be in submission, arranging ourselves underneath the insubordination to the one who's teaching us. Yes, women should learn. We are to become educated. Learn as the men learn, behaving themselves correctly towards those who teach them, not making a big scene about something and disturbing others who may, in fact, want to learn the truth of God's word. And Paul continues and he says, But I do not permit a woman to teach, neither to self-impose her adult male. So Paul says, I don't allow her. I do not give the woman who is learning permission. I do not commit to her the charge of guardianship to instruct. And here, of course, we're still in the context of the woman who is learning. And while she's learning, she shouldn't be trying to teach the teacher. <laughs> but the woman is learning in quietness. That's the context we're talking about. And not to act on her own authority. To place herself as the one who is in authority. Who authenticates what she does. Well, this is what I'm going to do. No, the woman is to learn regarding God and the things of God. In quietness. In, in submission taking the position of quietness, of submission to her adult male, the one who is teaching her, and not taking the role of her adult male as though everything was authored or originated from the woman as being a female goddess, as being in the first place regarding everything. Since then, she would not be in subjection. And Paul said, when the woman is learning, She's to be in quietness from within and in all subjection, but contrary to that kind of behavior, to behaving badly, trying to outdo the man who's trying to teach her the truth of God's word, she should be in quietness. And here again, Paul repeats that word, quietness. He's really emphasizing the truth that we are the women who are learning are to be in subjection, to be undisturbed from inside, to be tranquil from within, to allow the man to teach her. You know, this does not mean that she can't talk or that she shouldn't utter a word in the church meetings because we've already seen that women should in fact speak in church meetings. They can prophesy, they can speak in tongues, they can interpret those tongues. And further information regarding how the women should behave in church meetings are also given in the book of 1 Corinthians. And you can look at my teachings on 1 Corinthians, specifically chapters 12, 13, and 14. Paul continues now here in 1 Timothy, explaining so that Timothy can teach others in Ephesus, the men and the women, about their behavior. He says, in truth, Adam first was molded. So the man, the human being, who was the male, was formed from the clay first time-wise. And that word to mold is used because God molded the man from the clay or the earth as a potter molds his earthenware vessels. So the man, Adam, first was molded by God, and then Eve, she was molded afterwards. And Adam was not deceived. 
The first man, Adam, was not caused to be deluded. He was not beguiled by Satan, nor was he beguiled by his woman. But the woman, having been wholly deceived, became and continues to be in the stepping aside. The woman was caused to be fully deluded. She was thoroughly beguiled with false or lying statements given to her by the devil, by Satan. And you can see that back in Genesis chapter 3. She was caused to be fully deluded, thoroughly beguiled by Satan, not by her men. And consequently, she was within the sphere of action of a transgression or stepping aside. She went beside or aside from the truth of what God had communicated to Adam, her man. God had told Adam his word before Eve was made. Paul continues, though, to explain, first of all, regarding Adam and the woman, and also today we can see the same. Let's continue here and read. So we're looking at verse 15 in 1 Timothy chapter 2. But she will be saved by means of the childbearing. So the female member of mankind, the female, the woman, will be saved by means of or through the childbearing if ever they may remain in belief and love and holiness with sound thinking. So let's look at that more closely. Specifically, the first woman will be made safe by God from being in transgression through her giving birth to the child from whom the promised seed, the Christ, the Messiah, would be born, who would make that redemption and salvation available for all of mankind, in, including the females. If it would ever happen that they, Adam and his woman, stayed living at that time within the belief and love and holiness and with sound thinking. Of course, today, after the day of Pentecost, in reference to this phrase, we can see that women who believe what God says are saved by God, and they also receive the same gift of Holy Spirit as men do. So today, the women who believe regarding God and the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, receive the gift of Holy Spirit and they become saved. They cannot lose that salvation. And so whether or not a woman physically gives birth to a child during her lifetime today, she is also saved, the woman, by the same childbearing. Because why? Because the childbearing refers to the Christ. Today, females are saved because of what was accomplished by the Lord Jesus Christ. Adam and Eve looked forward to the childbearing. Today, we can look back because Christ has accomplished redemption and salvation and made it available. So let's continue and look at what it is that Adam and Eve were to continue in during the everyday living of their lives and how today we should also behave. And that is, we should remain in or stay, continue living in belief, in faith, in the information that God makes known to us to believe, to trust, to live our lives according to God's words to us. And love, and that word love is the agape kind of love, godly love. And you can look at that in more detail in 1 Corinthians and chapter 13. So we have, we should remain in belief and love, godly love, and holiness, sanctification. And the word holiness comes from the Greek word hagios, which means to be separated from that which is common or defiled or what is against God. So we should be in belief, 
in godly love, we should live in holiness, and we should remain with sound thinking that is in company and association with thoughts in our minds. The man and the woman should have thoughts in their mind that are sound, that are safe in God's viewpoint, that are with prudence, thoughts that are in alignment with salvation. And this is the same word that was used in verse 9. Now, as I mentioned, the same is true today for men and women who have become holy people regarding our walk, our behavior. All of us have received the gift of Holy Spirit, the same gift of Holy Spirit. We have the Spirit of Christ within us, and thus we are holy people, and we cannot become unsaved. We cannot, the male or the female cannot become unsaved. We can't lose our salvation. Once we receive it, we have become children of God, sons of God. When Christ returns, every one of us, all holy people, will be gathered together with our Lord Jesus Christ in the air. However, in our walk, in our behavior, it is up to our freedom of will to continue to live our everyday lives as God wants us to live in belief and godly love and holiness with sound thinking. So Paul was showing the relationship between the man and his woman and why the woman should behave in such a manner. When he was talking about Adam and the woman, he was not talking or teaching about Adam's stepping aside, his transgression, which you can read about in the book of Romans chapter 5, verses 14 to 21. And also, if you look back at Genesis chapters 1 to 3, we see that the woman was not given the name of Eve until Adam believed what God told him regarding the Messiah, regarding the coming Christ, which is recorded in chapter 3 and in verse 15. And then he gave the woman the name of Eve in chapter 3 and in verse 20. And Eve means the mother of all living because she gave birth and consequently the Christ was born. Now as we approach the end of chapter 2, in most Bibles and texts, the next three words are put into the next chapter, in chapter 3 of 1 Timothy. However, we should realize that when Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, he did not insert chapter and verses, you know, making divisions in it as we see them in our modern Bibles today. So let's continue and read what Paul wrote next. He said, the word is believable. The word or the spoken account is faithful. It is trustworthy. These are the same words that Paul has written in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse 15, where they relate to the truth that Christ came into the world to save sinners. And here in chapter 2, Paul has just written about the availability of redemption and salvation. And again, he's emphasizing that what he is writing or what he is saying is believing, believable, trustworthy. 